Rub up your engines! In the first half of 2019 fiscal year, Nissan, profits were down 73%. That is a whopping drop. Now, there's no hard data out yet because Nissan claims they're going to come out with a press release sometime in the future to say exactly what's happening, but <laughs> they're in deep trouble. I'll forecast that they do end up shutting down some of their plants and cutting a whole bunch of models because, hey, you cannot lose 73% of your profit in one half and not have drastic ramifications. I mean, look at Chrysler with their Jeeps that they can't sell. They had to shut production down for so many weeks because they got all these cars that they can't sell and they certainly don't want to make more and pile it up and have a bigger pile of vehicles that they can't sell while well, Nissan's even more dire shapes than the Jeeps are. So far in the rumor mill they're going to cut 4,300 white collar jobs in the United States and Europe and probably shut down two plants and it's also in a rumor mill that they're going to shut down Two of their sales offices in the United States. Now, there are 20,000 U.S. jobs. Nobody knows how much of those are going to get laid off, but there's definitely a storm of brewing for Nissan. Now, Nissan North America already announced that it's going to cut travel by 50% for all the U.S. business guys that work for them, and they did extend the Christmas holiday this year by two days to save some money. Well, <laughs> what's two days going to make? <laughs> this is kind of like you're moving the deck furniture on a ship, but it's going down. Two days are going to make them one way or another. I mean, I guess some bean counter came up with that idea. That's certainly not going to save the ship while it's sinking. So yeah, Nissan's in big trouble. The future will see exactly how much, but I mean, it's in dire straits that you lose 73% of your profit in half of a year. That's, I've said it for years, their quality's been going ever since they merged with Renault around 2000. They've been going downhill, which is a shame because they were originally a really good car company. It just shows you that a lot of times these companies merging together, it's not good for anyone. The company itself, the products, the people who buy them, a lot of times it's not a good idea to go mega because mega sometimes is just mega problems. Well, everybody's talking about the Tesla Model Y, the first subcompact SUV that they're making. But here's something you might not know. It's not finished yet. They say that they're going to be making the body in a gigantic aluminum cast machine. So instead of having 70 separate parts made out of steel and aluminum and then all put together, it's going to be one gigantic aluminum cast piece, which of course is going to make them more efficient because it's going to weigh less too. That's going to cut a lot of weight down just like Ford did with their F-150s. I think the F-150s shed like 750 pounds going to a bunch of aluminum body parts. This giant casting machine is going to be able to make the whole body in one piece. Think one piece instead of 70, it's going to cut production costs. They don't have to put all that together. It's going to be one gigantic aluminum piece instead of aluminum steel, so it's going to weigh less. And stylistically speaking, they said it's going to be a chrome delete. You know, a lot of people, they put these chrome delete kits on. That's what a lot of people are going after market, so they figured, hey, why not make a whole vehicle that way? It'll probably be popular. You know, people jump on one bandwagon or another when it comes to styles. But if people have to pay two, three grand and extra to have it done and they can buy the car already that way eh, it'll probably be another sales thing for them but the main thing is that hey then i got this giant body is going to be one piece more efficiently made weighs less and it could really radically transform how vehicles are made if other people follow it up if you know anything about history when ford first came out with their big v8 cast engine that was a radical transformation and ford did that during the great depression his old model v8 engine had a bunch of pieces had to be all together and they made the first all cast one piece block system. People told him he couldn't do it, but Ford got it through. So, I mean, if Tesla ends up making these and they work out fine, it's going to be a radical change in how car bodies are made. Rolls87 says, Scotty, love your channel. You're great. Got my grandfather's an 03 Rolls Royce Phantom with 146,000 miles, and he wants to give it to me. I'm young, and I don't have that much money. Can I afford this car? No. <laughs> Unless you've got all kinds of money coming in. If Grandpa own an 03 Rolls Royce Phantom. He must have a lot of money. If you can cut a deal with Grandpa that you'll put gas in it 
And they are gas hogs, realize that. And change the oil and filter yourself. If any other repairs come up, Grandpa will say, yeah, don't worry, I'll cover any big repairs. Go ahead and drive around in the thing. <laughs> but if Grandpa's just giving it in the car and saying, hey, it's yours now, you got to take care of it. Don't even think about accepting that car unless you're going to turn around and just sell the thing <laughs> you get somebody probably want to buy it i've got customers that are millionaires that have rolls royces and they even gripe about the repairs on them it's just ridiculous something like a brake rotor on a normal car you can go to AutoZone and get for you know sixty dollars forty five dollars those things are like a thousand dollars oh they're just ridiculous cars they're for rich people <laughs> and unless grandpa's going to pay for the repairs how are you i would not take that Rolls Royce. Nate Brawl says, Scotty, I got no two Honda Civic Coupe, 144,000 miles. Been in an accident. The airbags deployed. I took it in and they said that it needs everything the modules, the airbags. What should I do? All right, here's the thing. I have seen numerous of my customers' cars totaled by an insurance company because the airbags deployed. Because the insurance companies have to fix them with new airbags, new modules. And in the case of something like an O2 Honda Civic, they total the car because <laughs> the repair would be more than the car's worth. Now, uh, it's an O2 Civic, so I'm assuming that you didn't have full coverage on it, right? I <laughs> would on a car that old. If this is coming out of your pocket, it doesn't make sense to pay for new airbags and modules. It's more money than the vehicle's worth. Now, it's not illegal to put used airbags and modules in a vehicle. But you'll find most mechanics would never do that because the liability issue is too big. By federal law, you can have them put in your car, but they have to be tested and certified that they actually still work. I don't know of anybody who even does test and certify those things. Now, I mean, legally, it's your own car. And if you wanted to fix it yourself and you wanted to go to a junkyard and buy used ones, that's on you. You decided that you were going to do that. But you're not going to find any mechanics they're going to the mechanic, she's going to say, we're going to buy new parts and put them on. Here's what it costs. If you don't want to do it, if they're honest like me, they'd say, hey, if you want to go to a junkyard and buy used ones, put it on yourself, go right ahead. There's no law against doing it on your own car. The problem is, though, if a mechanic does it, they're liable. And let's say you put them in your car and then later you sell it to somebody and there's a problem, they could come back on you. So a lot of times guys just told them, oh, I got customers that don't have much money and they have a car like that and they get the body work fixed and they just drive it with no airbags in it and use their seatbelt. Could I have a 2003 says, so Scotty, I just took the motor out of an 07 Corolla and put it in an 03 Toyota Corolla, and it won't run now. Doesn't have any spark. I would have never done that in the first place. I've warned people that all the time in my video. That's four years newer than the one that was original in the 03. There are so many changes over the years. Fuel injection parts, ignition parts, computers, software, and wiring. I tell people don't even ever try to do that on a modern car because... There's just too many things that might not fit and a car may never run without drastic modifications. I had a guy that tried that once with a Honda. He ended up having to buy a different computer, a wiring harness from the junkyard because he didn't want to buy the new one. It cost a thousand something bucks. Took him months to get it sorted out and then it ran sort of okay. You can't do that. It's not a logical thing. Now you've done it. My advice is try to find a real pro Toyota mechanic who's willing to at least look at it and give you an opinion in person, scanning it and seeing what's going on. Maybe he could figure a way to bypass something that will make the ignition system work. Me, what I generally do is if somebody has a vehicle like that and they tow it to me and it doesn't start, first thing I do is I hook my scan tool up and see what's going on. The scan tool won't even communicate. I can't get any data. I stop right there and I just say, look, I can't communicate because that computer and that wiring doesn't mesh with the engine you put in with all the sensors and everything that was on it. I'm not going any further. Take it to a Toyota guy. Maybe he's seen that before and knows something that he can do. But if not, you could be into a real insane amount of expenditure. It's a 17-year-old Corolla. Let's say you'd have to spend two, three grand fixing all that computer stuff to try to make it to work. You could have gotten a whole car for that or less. You would have been better just getting another car and not putting another engine on that one. That's why I warn people, don't mess with stuff like that. If you're ever going to do that, you got to find the same year, the same, same model. So everything's going to be interchangeable. You can't change years from years because there's too many production differences in the years, especially fuel injected cars and ones with automatic transmissions. There's too much change from year to year. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.